In this video, we're going to take a look at getters and setters. So what are getters and setters? So getters and setters give control on how a property should be get or set. So that's really straightforward. And in our case, we're going to take a look at this animal kind. So we have our property animal kind kind. And now it's public. People can access our kind value and they can manipulate it and do whatever they want with it. But we have now no control of what's going to be inside our kind value. That's why there's a best practice, which is called getters and setters, of course. So we have now a property animal kind kind, but when we use getters and setters, we use a property animal kind and we make it private. Then we create a getter, for instance, that's going to get a value out of the private value. So we have animal kind get kind. So the animal kind is our return type. Then we have the get, which says, hey, this is a getter. Then we give it a name. And then we just open up brackets and return this dot kind with the underscore. And this way people can still access our kind value outside our class, but we are in control of what they are going to see. The same is for the setter. The setter is a void method which uses the set keyword and then we give in the name kind and we use the animal kind and then a value. So that is the input. And then we set this private value with our value. So to show you what this can do. So let's go to our code and implement this. So the first thing we can do is we're going to set this with a private. And now we're going to see some errors because, hey, there's an underscore and not the not underscore variant. And we're going to fix that by first creating our getter. So we're going to use animal kind and then the get keyword kind. And then we're going to return this kind. And as you can see, our errors will be fixed. But this is the only one that's still there. And that's because this is a setter. We are here setting the value and not getting the value. So we can fix that as well by using void, not animal kind, then set, then kind. And we're going to expect a value here. So animal kind value. And we're going to set our underscore kind with this new value. Now that should be fixed as well. And it's saying something, it says avoid return types on setters. Okay, so we delete that. So that is better. Okay, and if we now run it, then it should be fixed again. So everything works fine. So what we can do now is that for every person that wants to set it with a dog, we can change it to cat, for instance. So if value is is animal kind dog, Then we're going to say that value is animal kind dot get. Oh, I have to type it right, of course. So I don't know why you want to do this, but still it's, it's something that we can. So let's do that. If I now run it, this Harry the dog should now be Harry the animal cat. Okay, so what we also could do in our setter is implement this validator and maybe it's better to set it in here than in the constructor because we can still set this kind value outside our code so people can access it and give in another value and if we set it inside here then we are sure that when it's set in a constructor or when it's set outside the constructor the input is validated and i'm going to delete this again because that this has no purpose so if we now run it then it should still be working or not. That's also fine. So why is it working? It says kind is, is a zero. If kind is, is null, then do this. Now, well, kind is not the right value. It should be value. And if we now run it again, then it should be fine. Okay. What we can also do is create a getter that doesn't have a property. So how does this work? We can say string, then get, and we're going to fix that animal kind of dog here, and we just want the dog. So 
we're going to say string get kind string. And what we're going to do is we are going to get the value from our kind property. So this kind, and we're going to return the value dot to string. And then we're going to split that by this dot here. And then we're going to say that we want a second index. So now what we're going to do is when we ever get this kind string, then we're going to take the value from this property, the underscore kind, and we're going to return that with the value to string. So it's going to read this out. Then we're going to split it by this dot. And that means that we now have two inter entries in a list, the animal kind and the dog. And we're going to pick the second, which is the dog. And when we return that, then we can write our dog. So instead of here, we use kind, we use kind string. And if we now run it, then it should write out the right way as we expect. So as I mentioned in the last video, we should, we're going to fix this with lambda expressions and we are actually able to do that. So lambda expressions, also known as arrow functions, are a quick syntax to write a certain code. So how does this work? Instead of this, together with the curly braces, we could also use this error operator. And what we're going to do now is we're not going to return because it knows that we're going to return something, but this value doesn't exist. So if I now just use the this underscore kind and delete this left or curly brace, we should be fine again. And if we now run it, we should have the same answer. So as you can see, it's a little bit faster to write this out than the whole curly braces, getting the value and then afterwards splitting it. So this is what we call a arrow function. And this is something that isn't actually necessary. You can, if you want to write it out in a whole, but if you're experienced, then this is maybe a quicker syntax to write it out. So we can now use this kind string inside a class, but we are also able to use it outside. So we could say a kind string and we could run that. And here we get our values back.